Hello, welcome back to Blender Sushi Live Noting. In this video, I'm going to do a quick um, preview on the, the incoming versions of Animation Notes, which is version 1.7. If you if you download the latest for official release, it's a uh, it should be version 1.6, and it should install um, to Blender quite easily. The one I will be using it's a uh, it's it's an early build. It's a uh, it's called the Cyton branch. It's a, I think it's a Python. Um, it's using a language, Python language, but using C language underneath. So it should be a little bit faster or more, a lot faster than the one you, you use in a version 1.6. But anyway, um, if you want to try it yourself, you need to download it from graphical.org um, at this address above. Um, um, it's written here that uh, it's still a development build. Not many people use it yet. And if you find bugs or any feedbacks, you can report it at the GitHub. And Jax actually made this a uh, three video showing to you what you can do with the with the new um, version of one point uh, animation notes version one point seven. So I'm gonna do like a rundown of each features, um, but not 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 in details. I'm just I'm just gonna kind of compare it, the way of thinking, um, the new ways of thinking that you you can do um, in version 1.7. But I'm gonna compare it using um, Sphere Chalk as well as um, using Blender if you want to do it manually. So. So the biggest thing is probably the the fall off. The fall off in um, in one point seven. I can show it really quickly. Um, let's switch to compositing and turn on animation nodes. I'm gonna save it. Preview one point seven. I'm gonna show it to you. This in the user preferences this is animation notes version 1.7 okay it's a it's a development build so it's a test build it might have some bugs create a new um, node 3 um, the biggest thing is the fall off uh, I'm gonna show it to you uh, by using grid mesh Um, I'm gonna turn off auto draw so it's a little bit faster. <clears throat> Step and size. Okay, this has a different node as well. I'm gonna do mass object output. Um, we're gonna output a new mesh. So in a way, um, these uh, newer versions will be behaving a little bit more like Spreadshop. It can do a lot of advanced things to to mass creations or mass modifications, and you can also do like a new um, way of instancing. You can do all those without using loop um, because uh, the list, the data list, will be kind of factorized automatically, similar to how Spreadshop works more or less so let's output this guy so at the moment it's just okay it's outputting um, a plane um, there is this new node it's called um, let me check real quick offset vectors nodes so offset vector nodes can kind of uh, can displace um, vertices of a mesh offset. I only installed it last night and I have a brief look at everything and then I, I decided I, I want to give this a try so what you can do um, so we have the original grid mesh node pipe 
uh, data from here we can pipe this guy into this guy and that into that guy nothing will change except that um, we are kind of offsetting the vector here of the this resulting mesh we can zero that out or we can so it seems like it's only working for the whole objects but it's actually kind of displacing it and we also have these uh, new options it's a green color fall off so that's a new uh, we're gonna look at that real soon um, the offset is actually this is a uh, something we can vectorize you see this is a it's uh, you can plug in uh, list of values normally we whenever we see like a kind of like a 50% alpha or transparency looking dots that means it's a list and we have to use a um, loop but in the newer version 1.7 you can skip the loop so I will not be using loop today I'm just gonna use the node that's provided so random random vector actually now can do um, like a vectorizing you see there's a new option here that's allowing you to use a vectorized output it kind of it's gonna output um, multiple values instead of a single values and you can tell by the transparency different so if I turn that on and I know the count the number of random vector needs to match the the mesh vertices here so if I plug this into the count see I get the get list length automatically so this random vector knows how many um, vector it should output we can plug this into the offset now we have a randomized mesh and we can adjust the scale it's, it's, um, it's offsetting the vertices of this grid in all directions randomly we can adjust the seed in the past we should uh, we actually use a loop in order to do this and now it's much simpler it's more streamlined the data just pass through and then you get the output quite nicely um, if you want to do like um, if you want to just uh, randomize in the Z axis we can do that as well let me just collapse this if we use a separate vector so this is apparently working with a vectorized data now combined vector so this is kind of quite intermediate level a little bit more advanced than usual so you can have something like that and you still have control over the grid and yeah that's really cool um that's one thing I will but I will show it to you that's uh, the same thing if you want to do it using spare chalk as well because it's kind of kind of nice to know many different ways to do it maybe before spread chalk I can show it to you using blender on displacement modifier so I have a grid and this grid is um, it's not live it's a uh, unlike the one we created using animation nodes it's, it's pretty much live you can make adjustment this one is kind of a uh, bake this grid is uh, it's not live and we, but we can do like a live displacement using this uh, displace modifier add a new texture and give it a like a cloud probably wait uh, noise or Voronoi Voronoi can work as well can increase the strength and you know that we can always use empty to kind of offset the texture 
it's a basic stuff and you can also do the same thing using spread chalk spread chalk is especially great for procedural mesh um, mesh uh, procedural mesh creations or generations um, it's all parametric uh, let's see plane it's called plane or it's not called read and let me show it to you how you do it in spare chalk the nice thing about spare chalk is you have this kind of ghost preview of what you're gonna create and this is a really fast at viewing the result as well and of course you can always bake it and it's become a real mesh but I like I, I get used to working using this uh, ghosted um, mesh and sometimes we want to provide the matrix to adjust the position in spreadshop actually to do something like this is quite simple spreadshop has uh, one node that does it for you randomized input vertices this is exactly the same as the one we have here on the left this guy this is exactly the same and if you want to work on the real mesh as well you can use the viewer bmesh mk2 node Let's plug that in and plug in the faces now you have real mesh so this this and this are the same just different way of working and I can compare it to you so this is animation nodes it's randomizing the vector separating the vector and combining again and offsetting the vector that's basically the same idea okay and but the new thing in animation nodes let's get back to animation nodes we focus on animation nodes is this follow-off okay the follows allow you to kind of a uh, influence in the influence the or uh, the displacement in in certain way if we look at we search for the offset nodes uh, we should have a lot not offset but a follow -off. so we have a lot one two three, four five six there's a lot of uh, follow -off nodes the easiest probably the easiest to understand is the point distance follow -off. I'm gonna use that um, and this is another node and let's see so we need basically we need to plug in plug this into the green dots and you can see what's happening I can adjust the distance but you can see there's a imagine there's a dot there um, actually the dot is at zero 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 but I because I move the objects I'm gonna move it back to the center still not quite sure what happened if you how to do how to set this up if the object is moved maybe we need to apply the matrix or something anyway I'm gonna I reset the position of this grid and we know there's a this a point distance fall off that we can we can adjust somewhat see I'm moving the point in the y axis and in the x axis the easiest way to visualize this is to maybe if we use an empty and this empty we can use as the position for the point distance so I'm gonna source that guy using object transform input just grab it and pipe location now we're using the locations of this empty um, yeah but we need to update it so I need to because I, I turn off the auto updates uh, if I turn it on it's a little bit slower so I'm just gonna do it 
like this. I'm gonna run the playback. I'm gonna hide the switch up one. And back to animation nodes and playback. So you see, that's a point distance field doing the fall off to our displays, displays uh, grid mesh. I can increase the displacement. That's a really cool effect. And you have a bunch of them. I, I haven't tried all of them, but uh, there is also these. Uh, Directional fall off. That's quite easy to understand as well. So let let me test it. So it's kind of uh, imagine there's a like a invisible field that you control um, the directions. So this is in the x axis. So kind of that way. Okay, or we can change the directions left to right, like to left. Maybe I can change the position. Um, maybe doing it in the y axis. So I can control the size. That's probably. Maybe there's a bug or no, it's not a bug. Uh, let's see. Yeah, it's need to because I'm not updating. It's a uh... I need to put run the playback so you can do it in both sides or just one side. But yeah, you can see the effects happening. It's kind of like a wave here you know it's a directional okay so it's a <clears throat> that's a directional fall off normally in order to do this um if you want to do to do it using blender displacement maybe you want to adjust the texture and multiply the texture or you're doing it using dynamic paint dynamic paint is probably the best way to do it there are others fall off but i won't i will not I will not look at them one by one. So they yeah, fall off. We talk about fall off. Talk about offset vector, more vectorized. Yes, less looping. Which is that guy? New way of instancing and replicating. Right. That's a. Uh, how do I explain that? New ways of instancing. Let me try. So you, there is a new replicate um, mesh data node, and this is quite powerful. It's, um, normally you need to use um, object instancer and a loop to do instancing of multiple objects. Now you don't actually need to do that. You uh, let's say. I'm using this icosphere and I will source the icosphere data. Get the icosphere and this is gonna be the objects that's gonna be instance over the vertices or the face, doesn't matter. Um we will see. But we still need to out output it. Kind of like a spare job so and we need to provide a transformational data that we can and we can use this uh, the grid mesh that we have there you go that's the result um, where's our original icosphere let me scale the original so that's a master whenever I update it's gonna follow the master this business of um, instancing and replicating is is powerful because normally 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 you would do this um, 
in Blender, you can use it in many different ways, um, either using particles and particle instancing, or you use uh, something called Dupli. In Blender, you have something called Dupli. It's a it's Blender specifics. Dupli is very special. I will show it to you. If you have um, the cone, for example, and I'm gonna scale the cone real quick. So you have this object, and if we parent it to the grid, Control P. So I'm parenting that cone, okay? And if I turn on the dupli options, under objects we can see there's a duplication. There's an option for vertices. So I have the dupli duplications of the cone now. But I need to do it on the parent, either on the vertices or on the faces. With the face seems to be inheriting the, the normal of the face, sort of. And there's also group. If you if you're grouping a couple of objects, it will instance it. Um, probably it's much easier to understand if we are using um, particle. So that's using dupli. I'm gonna use particles now. Generate particles on this grid. This is like just normal grid. How many particles do we have? Um, let's say we have 100 particles. Being generate, generated over times, and gonna I'm gonna instance torus. The way to do it is uh, under this particle options. We can turn on the object and dupli objects is the let's say the torus. If I run this, um, might be a little bit slow, but you can see the torus being born and they are quite small because of the size by default is 0 0.05. But I can increase that. Actually, I can do it like this. Um, just emit all the particles on frame one. That's if we use um, particles, and obviously with particles, it's a uh, it's much more robust, but it's also more complex because it will look at the each points, vector directions, the normal, all sort of stuff. And we can randomize the rotation, etc. There's a lot of stuff happening if it's if we are working with particles. Obviously. Um, if you want to do it really like complex, you will use particles. And particles is kind of the ultimate um, instancing method in, in in most 3D package. And you can randomize the scale. Let's see. Just just showing it to you. You can do it in, in so many different ways. So that's that's a uh, all particles related. You can also do it using modifier. So a lot, there's a lot of way to do it. Particle instance, um, select our grid, and yes. So that's uh, maybe I just did something pretty bad. It's it's gonna be so heavy for Blender. I'm gonna delete that. Okay, but that's a. Uh, instancing that's back to animation nodes and um, actually I want to show it to you using sphere chalk as well in sphere chalk you see we only need we only use a uh, two nodes this is the plane nodes gonna generate the plane and just these guys randomizing the vertices you can use um, vector noise all kind of sort of any ways to offset the vector, displays it, and if you want to do the instancing, we can do it this way. Gonna do, oops, stretch out, I'll tend to do that. Uh, yeah. Let's turn off Safari. Run Blender.
Don't worry, I already saved, so... Just wait a little bit. I think there is something with a fever node that's causing it to be out of memory or something. File, save, new version, good. Switch to Spreadshop. This um, viewer draw, yeah, we still have our thingy. Duplicate this. Okay, where were we? The object instancing in Spreadshop. If we have cube box, if you want to instance the box using Spreadshop, this is how you do it. You only need to plug the vector to the matrix. Matrix in and just plug anything to the location and it will do the job. It's that easy. Um, let me turn on our grid as well and make the box smaller. So you can see it's a uh, that's how you do instancing in Spreadshop. Um, looks like we lost our animation nodes instancing back to animation nodes and replicate I'll do it again replicate mesh data mesh data input is expecting the instance so we don't have we only have line and mesh generator inside animation nodes at the moment but we can use any let's use the monkey head just grab the monkey and plug this in like that and we can just plug in the vector list into transformations and update it And it should work. Oh, I forgot something. The output mesh data should be plugged into the target. Now we have Suzanne head. This is actually really really fast. Um, I tested and I tested on a uh, 2000 more than 2000 objects and this is really really super fast. It's kind of cool that it's uh, it's able to do that now. Um, did we lose our offset fall off? Let's try another fall off just for fun. Random fall off, custom fall off, constant. There's index mask as well of directional interpolate follow this can be interesting I haven't tried this mm. Susan head is probably a little bit heavy I'm gonna use icosphere did it uh, so we have this empty, the empty control in that guy. Oh, okay. Okay, the fall off is actually working right away. Um, random fall off. Let's try this. Okay, that's a really basic directional follow-up again. Yeah, I like this one. It's a uh, it's quite unusual. Of course, this will work in three D as well. It's um what I like to do is probably 
maybe using this virtual to generate the mesh mm. let's say box and use a fewer mesh That's what we got. Let's hide the other guy. So this is gonna generate box for us. Oops. I think I made like agreed with a too big of number. That's kind of uh, pretty dangerous. Gonna turn off Blender. Reopen another Blender, and for the final result, I'm gonna use the the objects being generated using Sphere Chalks inside Animation Nodes, just like a template to for instancing the objects. So that's gonna work really well. Okay, so where were we? Box, we're dangerous. Uh, just five by five by five. Size. Okay. Let's grab this guy. That's gonna be um, our template for this uh, replicate mesh data transformation. I'm gonna cut this and I will use another object mesh data. I'm gonna source this object, this uh, box, just plug in the vertex location. There you go. There you go, that's working just like I want it. I'm trying to find the icosphere. So the icosphere position is over there. There seems to be like an offset somehow. That because of spread chop, maybe uh, but of course if we back to spread chop and these guys can be randomized it should update uh, turn on the playback Just a little bit slow now, but yeah, that's uh, that's all the possibilities, I guess, in terms of deforming the mesh and instancing objects. You can do it in many different ways. Of course, with animation nodes and or spread chalk, you can have more controls. It can be a little bit complicated, but then you know you can work with someone who is more technical, and he will create the setup for you and. Yeah, sometimes you have to do that if you are or ask around. Um, that's uh, yeah. There you go. That's a uh, that's a lot of ways you can skin a cat or you can deform objects. You can offset it in the future version of Animation Nodes one point seven. Give it a try if you wanna play around with it. There are others. Uh, other features that I haven't talked about like this masking and new way of working with text this is a it's a lot maybe I'll do talk about that in the next video um, yeah so leave a comments in this video if you have any questions and like this video and also subscribe to the channel hopefully I can make more videos like this soon thanks a lot